remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius Travis Cook back with you once again, and today's show is one that I'm I'm taking pretty seriously. I mean, I take all the shows we do here seriously, of course, but I think this one is one of the more significant shows that we've ever done uh, in terms of our way moving forward as conservatives. Um, there's something that over the last three years on this show I have often advocated against that I've I've often uh, talked to you about resisting the temptation for. And that something is the idea of conservatives, Tea Partiers, if you will, breaking away from the Republican Party and forming a third party. There's been talk of that here and there since the Tea Party came into existence. We often hear that suggestion, and it is very tempting. I, I do not doubt that. It always has been. But I've always, up until now, suggested that it should be a last resort, that we should never take it off the table, but so long as the possibility were there for us to take over the Republican Party and implement conservatism through that mechanism, then that would be the best uh, possible way going forward. That's what I've always said. However, after what happened last night in the Mississippi Senate primary, I'm taping this on, on Wednesday night, the 25th. So what happened in that Mississippi primary between Cochran and McDaniel last night I must tell you that I am rethinking that stance very, very seriously. Now, don't get me wrong. The Fad Cochran victory in that election last night does not take away from the magnificent gains the conservatives and Tea Partiers have made during this election cycle, namely the loss of Eric Cantor in Virginia. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's one primary. You're, you're saying it's a, it's, a, it's a huge gain, one primary? Yes, I am, and here's why. If you look at the statistics, you look at the numbers, you will find that congressional incumbents win their primaries roughly 90 to 95 percent of the time. It's extremely rare for an incumbent of either party in Congress to lose a primary election. Now, what that means is that when you are a political movement that at the present time is reliant on the primary system to a large extent to get our people in, then winning one primary in an election cycle is a pretty huge thing. It's a pretty big deal. It's pretty stunning. If you were to be a, a political group like we are that relies on the primary system and you win two primaries in an election season, that would be pretty earth-shattering stuff. I mean, that would be front page news that would literally shake Washington to its foundations. It would it would destroy practically all the conventional wisdom that exists for primary elections. Well, what I'm telling you is in the big picture, we've come within 6,000 votes of winning those two primaries. We got one that stunned everybody, and last night we came within 6,000 votes of another. So the loss last night does not take away the very significant gains we and the Tea Party have made. So the issue is not that we lost last night. The issue, and my beef with the Republican Party right now, is how we lost. We lost by the Republican Party, the establishments within the Republican Party, the leadership so-called, sending resources and support into Mississippi for a man, Thad Cochran, whose main selling point was the promise of pork. Thad Cochran, if you look at his campaign, was little more than, I will bring federal money back to Mississippi. That was really the only thing he ran on. And when push came to shove, the establishment backed him. Not only did they back him, but they then took the unconscionable step, the unforgivable step, of appealing directly to our political enemies. Namely, poor Democratic voters in urban areas and promising them 
as I like to call it, free government stuff. That Thad Cochran will make sure your your food stamps keep coming down the pike for you. Appealing to what I call the parasite voters. We've talked on this show for years about producers versus parasites in America. Thad Cochran and the GOP establishment won this election by nothing more than appealing to the parasites in Mississippi who usually vote Democratic and getting them to the polls and getting them over the finish line. Now, if the Republican Party is the party of smaller government and fiscal responsibility, then how can this be? How does this make sense? How is this justified? To go out there and appeal directly to those who we have spent so many years fighting and justifiably so. People who, quite frankly, do not deserve a seat at the table in American politics. And no, I'm not saying that based on race. I'm saying that on so based on socioeconomic factors and their behavior. They are people who contribute nothing to American society. They are people who do not deserve consideration. They are people who take and do not contribute. They are people who are the source of our problems, the source of our crimes, and you went and got in bed with them. It's unacceptable. To consort with our enemies to defeat us? Well, just what in the hell do you stand for, Republican Party? Now, it's one thing to compete with other constituency groups within a political party and sometimes be defeated. That's at the end of the day, that's what party politics are all about. That's not uncommon. It's not unheard of. But it's quite another thing altogether for the party itself to actively work towards your defeat, which is what the Republican establishment did last night in Mississippi. We were the targets. Conservatives were the targets. Tea Partiers were the targets. Patriots were the targets. The very party that will tell you they are for limited government, that will tell you they are for fiscal responsibility, made targets of those of us who actually believe in it. And then, and you know this is going to happen, despite making targets of us and actively working for our defeat, now they're going to expect our support afterwards. Not only for Thad Cochran's general election, but for every other election that comes up. And you know, the presidential election comes around in 2016, they're going to come to us again, hat in hand. Hey, would you vote for us? Would you donate some money to us? Would you, would you work a phone bank for us? Would you put out some yard signs for us? Would you campaign for us? Would you drive people to the polls for us? They're going to come to us again because they always do. Because quite frankly, we conservatives are the only ones in the party who actually do that grunt work. So they love to have us vote for them. They love to have us do that grunt work. But it's becoming abundantly clear they don't actually want us anywhere near the political process. And this is not the first time. Look what they did to Sarah Palin when the media descended upon her. And she was the only reason anybody gave a damn about John McCain to begin with. The party didn't come to her aid. The campaign consultants of McCain tried to shut her up when she was the only one providing any energy. Look what the party did to Todd Aiken, abandoning him in a race that could have easily been won. But they just didn't, didn't like his comments. They were embarrassed. Despite the fact his comments were right, but it's another discussion for another time. Sharon Engel, Christine O'Donnell, abandoning them at the first sign of any kind of trouble instead of standing and fighting. I'm going to go way back, even Barry Goldwater, abandoning him after he wins the nomination for the presidency. It's almost as though they wanted to lose that presidential election. Not to mention, instead of just talking about individual people, not to mention all the times in the political arena they've turned their backs on us when it came time to fight a raising of the debt ceiling and know the leadership, oh, they'd fight us then. The government shut down, they turned their backs on us there. Even though so many 
within the party ran on the idea of the government shutdown. It was a positive thing. Y'all were okay with it when we were running for elections on it. But when it came time to actually do it, y'all didn't have, pardon my French, y'all didn't have the balls to follow through with it like we did. So I'm looking at this situation. I'm looking at this picture. And when it comes time for us on the conservative side to actually do something, and the party that we've been told we should caucus with turns their backs every time the going gets a little bit tough, they don't back us up. They don't really believe in what we say, but they make it sound good just long enough to get them elected. I have to reconsider the idea of going to a third party. I don't see what's left for the Republican Party in, uh, for me. And I'm not some Johnny come lately. I've been voting for over 20 years. I've been a Republican for over 20 years, card carrying. So I don't say this lightly. I don't say this as an idle threat. I've been faithful to this party. I've voted for the Bob Doles. I've shut up and let you run the John McCain's. I sat through the George W. Bush years, and Bush was a good man. But I let you get away with all that government spending and increasing government and spending money on crap like education. Hey, I deserve a bit of the blame for that. I'll admit it. and I'll, I'm man enough to own up to that. I've done it for 20 years. I'm not going to do it anymore. So with that in mind, I have a challenge. Since I am a 20-year Republican who's about to rip up the old membership card, I've got a challenge. This challenge goes out to anybody in a position of power within the Republican Party. The challenge is this. I challenge any of you to come on this show and make the case for why I should remain in the Republican Party. For why I, as a conservative, as a Tea Partier, should remain in the Republican Party and continue to support your party. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having illusions of grandeur here. I'm not saying that some big shot from the National Republican Party committee is going to come down here. I'm not saying that at all. This, this is open to anybody in a position of leadership in the party as a whole. doesn't have to be the national level. Someone on the state level here in Missouri could do it. Someone even on the uh, local level, St. Louis County, St. Charles County, where we tape this show, you're more than welcome to come here and make the case to me. In fact, you don't even have to come here to this makeshift studio that we've got. I will be glad to take the cameras out to you, the microphones out to you, at a, a location of your choosing, of your convenience, on your schedule. I will fit this into whatever's convenient for you, and allow you to make the case to me for why I should stay and why others like me should stay in this party. Now, I don't think for a second anybody will have the guts to actually follow through on this challenge, but as a voter, I'd like an answer. And so the best thing I think to do is to pose the question and to allow you within the Republican Party, those of you in a leadership role, I'm not talking about just regular voters, I'm always... I'm, I'm always happy to hear your feedback too, but I think this question needs to go specifically to those of you in leadership positions, committee members, whatever. I want to know, and I want to give you the opportunity to make the case for why conservatives like me should stick around. Ball's in your court. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.